Is there a right size or a wrong size for a painting? Different formats will affect the painting in different ways. When I have an idea for a painting, I consider what would be the best size and format for this painting. Hello everybody, I'm Henrik Skora. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. The answer to the question is no. There is no right format for a painting, and you can always adjust the painting to fit whatever format you have chosen. And yes, actually, some formats are more suitable to support an idea for a painting, which I will demonstrate in this video. This actually led me to paint on a different size of canvas than I usually do. As a painter, you have unlimited options regarding the size and format of your canvas. You can freely choose a size and the type of canvas you want to paint on. In fact, there are so many possibilities that the choice can be quite tricky. Some prefer small canvases because a small size of painting is easier mentally to comprehend. And then again, others prefer the larger format. Feel big is better. Actually, I don't know if big is better, but I feel that a larger canvas is giving you something for free. Many of the superstars of the history of art, for instance Van Gogh, Vermeer and Renoir, almost exclusively painted on small canvases. Unfortunately, I'm not a superstar, but I also prefer to paint on small and medium-sized canvases. The smaller ones are used for sketching because it's easy to change the motive of a painting only by using very few brush strokes. It's more complex and time-consuming to change the direction of a larger painting. So the decision on finding the right size of canvas is often based on dull, practical reasons far away from the creative process. However, practical reasons are tough to deal with. Maybe you paint outdoor, maybe you have small studio or limited space for storage, maybe you had a good offer at the supply store, or maybe you have been lucky to get a commission for a painting in a certain size. For financial reasons, I often buy larger quantities of canvases and matching frames, and I like to show several paintings in the same size on an exhibition. I prefer formats that I used to paint on, and to be honest, then I arrange my motive so that it fits into the format I have chosen. This is not ideal. I know from the back of my head that the choice of format and size of the canvas should be depending on what kind of painting you are making, not the other way around. My normal formats are in centimeters, 30 times 30, 40 times 40, 80, 90 times 120 centimeters. That's the sizes I normally use. Of course, your preferences can be different than mine but I prefer the square format. It's in my comfort zone and I can rotate the canvas the way I want to look at the painting from a new angle and it will generate some new ideas for me. Comfort zone is nice, however, not very challenging. And you need to challenge yourself in order to develop new skills and develop your process. Sometimes when I visit galleries and museums, I walk around looking at sizes. When you have the format in front of you, it's easier to decide if it could be interesting for you to try out a new format. Once in a while, I buy new canvases in new sizes. It's quite refreshing and give me a new perspective on my painting. I am a member of the artist group called the Blue Tower. We are 17 artists exhibiting together once a year. When exhibiting in a group, it's important to have a common theme for the exhibition. Also, working with a common theme make me paint paintings that I wouldn't otherwise have painted. For the last four years, our exhibitions have been based on the classic four elements, air, water, earth, and fire. And in 2024, the theme is the fifth element, whatever that is. After some reflection, I came to the conclusion that time should be my fifth element. The fact 
that time is passing. And the idea of my painting is to show a progression in time. The motive will develop from left towards right, which in my part of the world is the movement of the sun over the sky. For that, I have chosen a long horizontal format, which is 60 times 1 meter and 20. This format will beautifully support my idea. So to answer the initial question, Yes, in my view, this format is the right one for this painting. A horizontal format is often used for landscapes, and it lets the viewer's eyes move across the painting. I wanted to depict a passage of time because I chose time as my fifth element. My motive should be the edge of a forest with a horizontal development towards the right, experiencing all four seasons on the same canvas. It's naturally the green colors that dominates the palette for the seasons spring and summer, and the warmer reddish and brown shades for autumn. The green colors I mix with ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow light. Also, I use the sap green and mix it with different kinds of yellow, like yellow ochre, cadmium yellow again, and the warmer colors I make from ultramarine again and uh, yellow ochre. I also like to go in the forest and find leaves in different colors of the season. It's not important to me to, to exactly match the colors, it's rather to get the mood or the feeling of the different seasons of the forest. In this early stage of the painting, I don't focus that much on uh, exactly match the colors and find the right forms and shapes. I'm just trying to fill the canvas with a certain mood of the season. And then I can uh, later on always adjust the forms and colors to, to whatever I feel is, is, is better. I very much like this sketchy expression and I mix more and more green colors so that in the end the painting will have a wide variety of different nuances of green, yellow and reddish brown colors. I use the titanium white to, to make the colors more opaque. When I try to work with an opaque expression, I use water to thin the paint and it's very important that this water is clean, so I change it all the time. This is uh, the colors of the sap green, which is, I believe, very nice and fits very nicely together with, with the ultramarine and uh, the mix with the uh, cadmium yellow. Here, I try to focus on finishing a shape and then I can build the surroundings around that shape. This is what the painting is looking like right now. Here, I have found two shapes for a yellow color and uh, it's there. I just need to excavate it and here, here they are. The titanium white and the uh, the yellow ochre are quite opaque to work with, so it's it's easier with these colors. I, I, I started the painting by using the same direction, so I started from in the, on the left side and working slowly towards the right side, which is the same experience and development of the painting I want to achieve in this painting. I'm able to finish more and more of the pieces of the mosaic of, of the, the painting and um, maybe I'll have to, to 
paint over several times, three, four, five times in order to get this opaque expression that I, I like, especially for this painting. Now I, I put in some cadmium red directly from, from the tube, which is sort of a, a, fresh, a fresh thing to put into the painter. And, and then I try to, to find inspiration using the, the leaves I have gathered in, in the forest. The picture is closing in on the details and I very much like the process of finishing. And now for, for the, 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 the thin branches of, of the tree, I use a dark brown for this and also I use a, a dark gray color. All the time I fill in and change the original greens I started the painting by doing. Part of the experience when you walk in the forest is the blue colors. You can see the sky through the leaves. And, um, and now at this stage I, I fill in some blues to, uh, to contrast uh, the reddish colors of the autumn and to supplement the green colors. Uh, right now I feel that the painting has become a little bit too light and then I try to, to darken the colors and the expression just a little bit. Many details now are coming to me. Since I have only one hand to paint with. I, I'm not able to paint with my left hand. So I need to turn the, the painting every now and again in order not to mess up the wet colors I have already painted. And here we are. It's getting closer to the, to the final e expression. Um, I put more yellow in in the autumn part of the painting. The red and the blue sky are making a nice contrast. Then I need something to, to end uh, the painting with and in each end of the painting I have used some violets and this is the winter part of the painting. I'm, I'm a little bit in, in trouble here because the, the, the bare branches of the tree, they, they can't really um, balance the expression. So it's, the painting right now is looking a bit unbalanced. So I'll have to think of something to, 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 to cover up this uh, unbalance. I found out that I could use different nuances of blue that will balance the red and the green. And um, also I, I sort of uh, work with different nuances of, of the blues up in the sky. But in this area, it's, uh, it's possible for me to use darker nuances of blue and it will balance, in my view, it will balance the expression. I use uh, ultramarine uh, mixed with titanium white and also blue indigo, which is a little bit muted if you see it together with the ultramarine. So here it is, more or less. It will give a nice balance. And the blue one and the orange ones I use here will give also good contrast. At the bottom of the painting I use a transparent orange which will also work together with the, the blue in the sky. And here you can see uh, the painting is still a, a little bit uh, transparent which is fine because I can then choose to use what I see 
or I can paint it over once more to, to make it go away. Here I have made a mistake and if I act quickly on it, I can remove this uh, mistake by using clean water. And this is the painting, what it looks right now. All the mosaic, the parts of this bigger picture are finding their place now. These small sparks of blue are spicing up um, the expression of the, of the painting. I have found now the final form of the painting, but I still go on adding details and I use also a ruler here to make some straight lines and then I fill in with the thin small trees, which you can see among the larger trees of, of this forest. This orange color is cadmium orange. Cadmium is a nice color because it's very opaque and you don't need to paint it over several times. And it really stands out. And here we are, the finished painting. At least it's finished for now. So now I clean the brushes so that they will last for a longer period of time. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate to know what kind of format you prefer to paint on. Also, I would highly appreciate to know if you have any ideas regarding the fifth element. Maybe I can incorporate one of your ideas in my exhibition later this summer. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.